Well, I'm joined now by Bo Victor Nyland, uh, UNICEF's representative in Syria. Thank you so much for being here on the program. Uh, what should happen to the foreign nationals uh, and their children uh, uh, that we see there in Syria? Well, thank you, Matthew. I think the absolute urgency is about the repatriation of these uh, women and children. Uh, so far, over the last uh, two, three years, uh, we have managed to support governments to repatriate some 1,200 uh, women and children, yet uh, more than 10,000 women and children remain. And uh, as we heard from this interview as well, the situation is very dire, very difficult with very minimal services. And uh, also, of course, um, uh, ISIS uh, being outside the camp and having sleeper cells around, it is really urgent that uh, these families are able to go back home. You heard there in the report, the UK government won't talk about this specific case, but say generally our priority is to ensure the safety and security of the UK. What do you say to the countries that are effectively saying these people have made their choices and it's too dangerous to take them back? It's really important to look at, of course, uh, many countries have uh, legal obstacles. They may have uh, political obstacles as well. At the same time, these are citizens of uh, some 60 nationalities that we have in the two camps of Al Hol and Al Rouj in the northeast of Syria. And uh, of course, uh, this is no place to live. And, and in fact, uh, if we think about it, uh, having over these last several years taken only 1,200 people back, uh, women and children, if we project that, it will take another 20 years before before this population have been has been uh, returned to their countries of origin. And, and this is not acceptable. It really has to be solved. And these countries have an obligation to take their uh, women and children back. You talked about the numbers you have helped to repatriate. In terms of the question that was put there in the piece about uh, the, the, the capacity of children to be sent without the adult, have you managed to send any children without the parents who've been involved in IS? Yeah, Matthew, in fact, I mean, oftentimes also um, mothers come to us and say that they would prefer that their children are able to go back uh, should that be an opportunity that, you know, they are not uh, able to repatriate the mothers, but they would still want their children to go back. So it happens. And what we do in those situations is that we look at what is in the best interest of children. Um, and, you know, of course, there are uh, implications in terms of going without your mother and, you know, going to a country where many of these children have not med maybe been. At the same time, they may have relatives and other loved ones that they're able to stay with and, and lead a life back home. Uh, so uh, those are determinations and decisions that need to be made on a case-by-case -case basis. A final brief question, because the Danish police said today that three Danish women have uh, returned from the Syrian camps who, who had returned uh, have now been charged with aiding terrorist activity and going to a conflict zone. In your view, is that the best way forward that these people should go home but then the prosecuting authorities should then uh, take on uh, whatever case there is? Of course, each and every jurisdiction needs to consider whether there's also a legal case behind. And uh, that's, uh, that's a, a separate story. The, the many of these children, though, have never been part of any fighting or taken part in any criminal acts. Uh, so, uh, of course, adults have a different level of criminal responsibility that they also need to be held accountable for. We have to leave it there. But, Bo Victor Nyland, thank you so much for joining us uh, there from Amman. Thank you, Matthew.